My last analysis video was uploaded two weeks ago. Sorry f about the delay. Today we are going to analyze a racing game called Nailed. Hi everyone, as always Patrick here. If you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications, otherwise YouTube won't tell you if I posted anything. If you are new to the channel, make sure you watch until the very end and consider subscribing if you like it. Okay, it's finally time to talk about Nailed. Nailed is a racing game made by Techland in 2010. It also became one of Techland's many forgotten games, but more on that later. Right now, let's start when I usually start, the graphics. For a game release in 2010, the graphics are pretty good. To prove my point, let's compare this game to other games also made in 2010. Blur, Split Second, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, Superstars V8 Next Challenge, and many more. When you compare Nailed to these games, you will quickly notice that Nailed looks better than the average. The only problems I have with the graphics are the fact that the game sometimes likes to abuse motion blur and other spicy effects. The footage you're seeing right now is from the PC version. And I have to say, the PC port is pretty good, but there are two problems. Before I talk about those problems, we need to talk about the good stuff really quickly. The game natively supports 1080p, so you don't have to look for a workaround for this. Most graphical options you would expect are here, so again, it's not a problem. But what about those two problems I've mentioned? The first problem is that there is no anti-aliasing in game, and it is currently unknown if uh, NVIDIA control panel or other drivers can fix this problem. So right now, y you don't know if you can play this game with anti-aliasing. Or should I say it is currently unknown if you can force anti-aliasing in this game. But the second problem is pretty big, and that problem is the fact that this game doesn't have an FOV slider, and the FOV is unknown. Now, despite the fact that this game is 12 years old, there is no workaround for the FOV, so unfortunately you're stuck with the FOV the game gives you. To quickly summarize the graphics, they are better than the average in 2010, there is a bit too much motion blur and, er and post-processing effects, however you can experiment with those in the options, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, now it's time to talk about the story. There is none. Just like in Expendrayli and Expendrayli Extreme, you get a vehicle, you race, you get the first place, hands and repeat. Uh, yes, I know I've said it in the Expendrayli and Expendrayli Extreme analysis video, but I am going to say it again. You don't need to have a story for the game to be good. Expendrayli and Expendrayli Extreme didn't have a story and they were still great games. Why? Because the gameplay in those games is fun. More specifically, the gameplay makes up for it. Sometimes, a story in a racing game can make the game even worse. Example, the crew. Since I don't have anything more to say about the story, it's time to talk about the gameplay. If I could describe the game in one word, that would be crazy. Back in the day, I've heard a lot of people say that the, the gameplay in this game is chaotic, and I can see where they come from, but I don't really agree with that. You see, unlike in Expendrayli and Expendrayli Extreme, in this game you get a quad, or a motorcycle if you want it. Every single quad and motorcycle in the game is equipped with boost. 
Now of course you can use it for some basic stuff like going really fast, but sometimes you can use it to your advantage. So you've probably noticed that sometimes you just have to make a jump or a big jump or a normal jump or a small jump or really any kind of jump in this game. You can use the boost to gain extra speed even in the air and make those jumps easier for you. While it doesn't work for every single jump in the game because sometimes you have to use your quad or your motorcycle to tilt it, it is very nice to see that Techland has thought about those that use boosts for those things. Oh sorry, I meant to say jumps, not things. You can also modify your quads and motorcycles in many interesting ways. Do you want to have more boost? Sure. Do you want to have better control in the air? Sure thing. Do you want to humiliate your opponents with those modifications? Sure, why not? The options are there and they are also endless. Although I should quickly mention that modifying your quad and your motorbike in this game isn't as fun in this game compared to Expendrally and Expendrally Extreme. There is no money mechanic in Nailed. If you want to get new stuff, you have to unlock it in the career mode. Unlocking new parts and other things is really easy. All you have to do is win races and there you go, you have new stuff, new parts and much more. You can also customize your driving character or your driver, but it's nothing special really. You can change your gender and your clothes, mostly cosmetic stuff. That's it. Like I've said before, thankfully customizing your quad, your motorbike, gives you more options. Once you're done customizing both of those things, you can finally experience the gameplay. As I have previously mentioned, the game is crazy but in a fun good way. Do you remember a game released in 2008 called Pure? Nailed is kinda like Pure but slightly less crazy and much less chaotic. Here are some things you can expect from Nailed. Crazy gameplay, very fast speed, tracks with a lot of variety, a lot of jumps, a lot of rings to jump through, and much more. So I've mentioned the tracks, right? In your typical Techland fashion, the tracks are very creative and they have a lot of branching paths. Some tracks have your basic typical roads, other branching paths include shortcuts, and on some maps the shortcuts are so well hidden that you will probably not even notice them. For example, the track you're seeing right now has a secret train shortcut. In fact, this shortcut is so well hidden that you actually can get an achievement for finding it. Other tracks include environmental hazards, waterfalls that push you down, and much more. As much as I want to talk about all those creative things, the video would be 5 hours long and I don't want my analysis videos to be this long, so let's move on to my next point. The next thing I want to talk about that is also related to the gameplay are your opponents. In Nailed you race against 11 different opponents, but not all the time. There are some modes in which you don't even race against opponents at all, you are just racing against time. I would complain about this, but to be honest, sometimes you just need to chill out and race against time. Especially when you consider the fact that later in the game your opponents can be very aggressive. Not as aggressive as in Premium Stage 4 in Expand Really Extreme or anything like that but they can be pretty aggressive later in the game. 
As expected from a game released in 2010, you can choose three difficulty modes, easy, normal or hard. Forget about the simulation mode, this game is as arcadey as it can possibly get. And because this game is arcadey, that means the quads and motorcycles are very easy to control and sometimes you might crash into stuff but there's not much penalty. You can only lose 2 seconds at max. When it comes to motorbikes and quad bikes, they are a tiny bit harder to control but not by much. Crashing them into the wall is a bit easier though. If you ask me, I suggest completing the entire game with just the quad. Driving the quad in Nailed is less frustrating and more fun. As a matter of fact, you can complete this game with either the stock quad or the weakest quad in the game, even on the highest difficulty. To make things even easier, you can use stunts to your advantage, except for the fact that your driver isn't really stunting. You can just do touchdowns and control your quad bike in the air and that's kinda it. Yeah, however, using touchdowns, going through fiery gates and rings gives you more boost, which you can use to your advantage. You can also touch down your opponents or bump into them so that they lose control and you get a lot of boost this way. Well, assuming the game mode lets you do that. There are three different types of competitions in this game. Your standard race, which you are seeing right now, a time trial, and a stunt show. There is also a DLC which also adds the detonator game mode. However, I can't speak on that. I never tried that mode because I simply don't have that DLC. So I'm not going to talk about this mode in this video. Now let's quickly talk about those game modes. Standard race is the kind of race that you're watching right now. A time trial is, well, a time trial. And the sun show is pretty much the most annoying game mode in this game. Speaking of the stunt show, it doesn't make sense. Remember the part where I've said that your driver can do stunts but can do touchdowns, go for rings and sometimes eliminate opponents? Sometimes those game modes give you two perks. The first one is simply unlimited boost, so you can just uh, complete the stage really quickly. And the other perk is not being... is basically passing through your opponents. Sometimes you can get one of them, sometimes you can get both of them, and sometimes you just simply can't use them. Oh, sorry, my mistake, those are mutators. But still... While those perks aren't exactly a problem in a standard race and a time trial, when it comes to stunt show, they are infuriating. If you're playing the stunt show and you get the unlimited boost perk, or should I say mutator, your opponents suddenly become very aggressive and use that unlimited boost all the time, which means that you're going to have a very hard time passing them. However, the passing through your opponent's modulator is even worse. That's because you can't eliminate your opponents and they can easily overtake you. If you get both of those mutators, you simply can't win. Great. But you know what? Technically, you don't have to win every single race to complete the game 100%. No, all you have to do is to get second place in one series of races, just so you can get first place in the others. Nailed uses point system for races and for stunt shows as well. 
For time trials, all you have to do is to complete the track with a certain amount of time. When you get the first place, you get 1000 points, second place 900, third place 800, fourth place 700, and so on and so forth. This system was implemented really well, since it doesn't punish the player for losing that much. While the game isn't as hard as Xpendrelli and Xpendrelli Extreme, the game does have its hard moments, especially later in the game, so please keep in mind that this point system is here to help you. Now we have reached the part of the video where we have to talk about the bad stuff. All those nitpicks and complaints you've heard before can also be considered bad, but right now I am going about two major complaints. The first complaint I have is the repetitiveness. There are four different maps, uh, not counting the DLC, and the game really stretches those maps. They just don't stop. They really overstay their welcome. There are 15 championships in the career mode and after the 6th championship the game starts repeating maps. Now you could say that Xpendrelli Extreme did the same thing, but in Nailed it's even worse. Because of those repetitive tracks and maps, no matter how fun they can be, you will get uh, tired pretty quickly of playing them. And that's something you never want to feel when playing a racing game. Especially when this racing game is about quads and motorbikes and quiet bikes, going really fast, jumping in the air, eliminating opponents and stuff like that. The second problem I have is the replay system. Just like in Xpendrelli and Xpendrelli Extreme, when you complete the race, you can see your replay. There are two issues with this. Firstly, Nailed removed all the fun effects you had in Xpendrelli and Xpendrelli Extreme, which means you can have fun with many fun effects that were in those games and you're stuck watching the same environment over and over again. Secondly, watching those replays is not as fun as it was in Xpendrelli Extreme. Part of this is due to Nailed removing those fun effects from Xpendrelli and Xpendrelli Extreme. The third problem, although some of you may consider this just a nitpick, is the fact that this game is pretty short. You can complete this game in 2 or 3 hours tops, even on the highest difficulty. But there is one really cool thing I can say, and that cool thing is the soundtrack. If you're not a fan of electronic music, Nailed uh, gives you soundtracks from great bands like Slipknot and Rise Against. Oh yeah, one more thing, this game also has multiplayer, but because of Techland's stupid decision to use your emails to play, the multiplayer is not alive. And that's a shame because you can see that Techland has put a lot of effort into making this game. In conclusion, Nailed is a very crazy, ridiculous, but also really fun racing games with quads and motorbikes. It feels like playing pure from 2008, but with a few more issues. They, those issues don't ruin the game, but they can be pretty annoying at times. Also, about that DLC, if you want me to make an analysis video uh, about this DLC and the detonator mode, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a video about it. But that pretty much sums up everything I wanted to say in this analysis video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.